So revisiting our question of why aren't the most common words useful? The reason the most common words aren't useful is that they're generally common in all notes. They have a high term frequency. But in some sense, we actually want to pick out words that are common within a document, but otherwise not that common. So like generally rare, but common within a document. An example of this would be like the word vasectomy. Vasectomy is probably going to be common in urology notes, but overall, you know, if we had multiple different types of specialty uh, notes, they would be probably pretty rare because most, you know, gastroenterology uh, or most neurology notes are not going to be talking about vasectomies at all. So in other words, if we define document as being the note type, can't we find words that are common in urology notes, but not in neurology notes and vice versa? In order to do this, we need to calculate something called the document frequency. And then ultimately we convert that into an inverse document frequency. And that's what that IDF stands for. So let's talk about document frequency and what that means. The document frequency is the proportion of documents that contain a word. So if we define document as being note type, the document frequency would be one out of two or 50% if a word shows up only in urology notes or only in neurology notes. And it would be two out of two if it shows up in both urology and neurology notes. Notice that for document frequency, we don't really care how common a word is, like whether that word shows up one time or a hundred times or a thousand times. We just care how many documents it shows up in. And if we define document as being the you know, note type, then there's only really two options here. If a word is in our data set, it either showed up in only neurology or urology notes, or it showed up in both urology and neurology notes. And so, you know, if a word like the is super common, not only does it have a high term frequency, it's also going to show up in both urology and neurology notes, which we would like to penalize because it's, that makes it not very useful to differentiate between urology and neurology. So if we define document as a single clinical note, instead of defining document as note type, what would a document frequency of 1% mean? So what a document frequency of 1% would mean is that 1% of the notes contain that word. Now, within those notes, that word might only show up once, it might show up 100 times. For the purposes of document frequency, it doesn't matter. It simply means what proportion or what percentage of the documents contain that word, even once. Now, inverse document frequency is tightly related to document frequency. So mathematically, if you think about it, when I told you that a word like the has a document frequency of 100%, uh, the is a word that I'd like to de-emphasize. I want to emphasize words that have a lower document frequency um, and de-emphasize words with a high document frequency. So in some sense, if I'm going to take the term frequency into account on one hand to say words that are very common are good, and then I want to shrink the term frequency by you know the fact that words that are common in all types of documents are not good, then I need to define uh, a number that is smaller when words are very common in all the documents. And that math in mathematical formula is going to be inverse document frequency. So it's common to calculate one over document frequency because if we multiply that back with uh, term frequency, we start to get uh, a number that uh, encapsulates words that are common, but only in one type of note and not the other type. So if document frequency is low, 
the inverse of that will be high. And if document frequency is high, this value will be low. And if a word is so common, like the word the, then we actually want to basically ignore it by assigning a weight of zero. And no matter how uh, you know, low you got with one over document frequency, there'd be no way to assign a weight of zero to the unless you could give it an inverse document frequency of zero. And the way we do that is to uh, log transform that one over document frequency. So in reality, inverse document frequency is defined as log one over document frequency. And the reason is because one over document frequency, if document frequency is 100%, log of one over one is basically zero. If you are wondering where the heck did these formulas come from for term frequency and inverse document frequency, these are basically heuristics. They're formulas that um, or, you know, have come from the information retrieval community, from the natural language processing community. There's nothing you know, written in stone about them that this is the best way to do this, but they're helpful shortcuts and they're very commonly used um, in order to find uh, you know, words or phrases that are useful. So term frequency we already defined, and on this page here you can see inverse document frequency being defined. And again, you'll never have to calculate this. You can have the tidy text package calculate it. Okay. So now if we look at words that have a low inverse document frequency, those are words that show up in this case, only in a urology note or only in a neurology note, you'll see that those are also not very helpful. So I've arranged, uh, you know, the words in order of increasing inverse document frequency. And the inverse document frequency here is uh, zero, which means that, uh, you know, these words are Actually, I think these, this is done in the wrong order. So these words, I think, are uh, showing up everywhere because the IDF is zero. Um, so, but anyway, in any case, you can see these words are also not that helpful because 0 0.2, 0 0.4 are showing up in neurology and urology. So they're not helpful. Um, however, if I looked at words with a high inverse document frequency, you would think these words would be helpful because high inverse document frequency means these words only show up in urology or neurology. But these are also not that helpful. I mean, sure, in this case, the word 0.0, .0 only shows up in neurology notes, but and 0 0.35 only shows up in neurology, but 0 0.035 only shows up in urology. These seem to be not that helpful um, and that's confirmed by the fact that their term frequency is really low. Like the word 0.0, .0 only shows up two times. And both times it shows up, it shows up in a neurology note. But that doesn't make it a very helpful term to distinguish neurology from urology. So even though the concepts of term frequency are helpful for finding important words, the concepts of inverse document frequency, when it's high, are helpful for finding words that distinguish one note type from another. By themselves, they're not what we're looking for. So I asked this question when we were talking about why common words are not great to use. Um, and that question was, can't we pick out the words that are common within a document but generally rare? And we can do that by multiplying term frequency by inverse document frequency. So even though each of these numbers on its own is not that useful, when you multiply them together, we call it TF-IDF, where the TF is being multiplied by IDF. And this number tends to be high for important words that are useful for distinguishing uh, documents. And we want to select words that have a high TF-IDF. So now, if we do all the same things, but we sort the 
words by descending order in TFIDF. The words that we get as being important for neurology are MS, which probably refers to mental status, uh, the way it's documented in the physical exam. O, which probably refers to the way mental status is often documented. It's documented as uh, A space O times three, or alert and oriented times three. My guess is that the O is showing up because of the word oriented being uh, abbreviated as the letter O. Temporal, which refers to a lobe in the brain, uh, and it's a place that people can have strokes or other problems. Memory, which is obviously a neuro neurological concept. And then the word 93, which offhand I can't really say um, you know, why that's there. I don't know if that's referring to the year 1993 or to 93-year-olds, but it shows up fairly commonly. It has a count of 75, um, and so it's showing up as being separate. Urology, as you can see, um, th these are definitely the words that I would have thought of to distinguish between urology and neurology, but uh, anything involving, you know, uh, the uh, penis, urethra, urethral tract, scrotal tract, uh, and, you know, penile things, basically that encompasses a lot of what neuro the urology notes have. So this gives us actually a much better sense of what makes a neurology note different than a urology note. And these are the words that have the highest TFIDFs in those two uh, note types. Okay. So TFIDF can help us figure out what is important about a given document. So far, we have defined document as note type. But we could also consider each note as a document. And then we could calculate the two most important words for each note. And the only thing we would have to change here is that first we would need to group by doc ID rather than grouping by type in that second line of code. And then when we use our bind TFIDF function, we would need to change our document column to doc ID. So here you can see that that uh, in that first note, the two most important words are 96 and she. And if you remember back to when we looked at it, um, this was someone who um, I think was young and had vasculitis, and a lot of bad things had happened to her in the year 1996. So the word 96 appears 12 times in that note, which is why you know, the fact that it appears so often in that note, and probably very rarely in other notes, makes the word 96 important uh, for that note. You can see here that um, you know a, a lot of these have to do with uh, her and she, which possibly has to do with the fact that uh, in you know pretty much half the notes in uh, urology notes, many of those patients are going to be male, not all of them, but many of them will be. And so probably the word she and her, have a higher IDF um, at a note level than uh, other words like he. Um, disc desiccation, aneurysm acuity, temporal arteritis. So in a nutshell, these two words can tell you, you know, a little bit of, about what makes that note unique as compared to other notes generally. And we could look at obviously more than the top two, but this is just to get a flavor for what we can do at a document level. We can also figure out which notes are important based on a search term if we know how to calculate TFIDF. So for example, if we wanted to find a note that is most relevant for headache, what we could do is we could first group by doc ID word, calculate the counts, calculate the TFIDF the same way we just did on the last slide where we set document column to doc ID. And then we search for the word uh, headache and we sort the notes in order of descending TFIDF. And what we see is that the word most relevant to the search of the word headache is document ID 1409, which has a TFIDF of the word headache of 0 0.02. And the word headache shows up three times. Okay. 
So if we take a look at that note, 1409, we can see that this is someone who has a chief complaint of headache. That's what those first words of CC means. They came in because of headache. Um, and then as we read more about this, we can see that uh, they have, this person has a history of migraine headaches and a little bit more about details about the headache. So you can see that, you know, a lot of different notes might have the word headache in it, but TFIDF helped us find a kind of classic case where the person came in for headache um, just based on the properties of the TFIDF scoring. We could also search for the word fall. And here we get a bunch of notes back. And interestingly, um, the word, the note with the highest TFIDF for fall is not the note that has fall most commonly appear in it. So if you look at the first row, you'll see the word with the highest or the document with the highest TFIDF for the word fall is 1674.txt, where the word fall appears only once, but the TFIDF is 0 0.02. Whereas in document 1531.txt, the word fall appears three times, but the TFIDF is only 0 0.006, much lower. So how is that possible? Why does 1674.txt have a higher TFIDF, even though the N is actually lower? It's, the N is one as opposed to being three. The inverse document frequency is the same for all of, the, all of these notes. So that's not the reason. Um, and the reason TFIDF, or uh, rather inverse document frequency is the same for all these notes is that we're looking at the same word. And each word will only have one value for inverse document frequency. The reason the term frequency is higher for 1674.txt is because it has fewer overall words than other similar notes. So even though the word appear, fall appears only once, the overall note is much shorter. So it gives that word fall much more importance, even though it shows up only once. So if we look at this uh, note 1674.txt, we can see that this person is someone who comes in with back pain after a fall, but because their note is so short, um, the word fall is given more importance than a much longer note, which in theory could talk about fall and a whole bunch of other different things um, where the word fall is, you know, may not be as important even though it shows up three times. So if you disagree with that, that's totally fine. Like I said, TFIDF is just a, it's just a formula. It's just a heuristic, one way of prioritizing things numerically, but it's not the only way uh, that you can approach this kind of a problem. So, so far we've used TFIDF to find important words at a document level. We've used TFIDF to search for documents that are most relevant for a search term, uh, which happens to be a word. But if we had, you know, two words or a phrase that we wanted to look, uh, search for, we could also use TFIDF to find important phrases that kind of appear commonly. And the way we would do that is first we need to break up the document into two word phrases or tokenize into two word phrases rather than tokenizing into words. So, when I have a phrase like, this patient is a 48-year-old woman, and I break it up into words, it's kind of straightforward. If I break this up into two-word phrases, I get things like, this patient being one phrase, patient is, is another phrase, is a, is a third phrase, a 48 is another phrase, and so on. So you can see that I'm not defining the phrases as in any um, kind of logical, you know, way that assumes understanding of the English language. I'm literally just breaking it up into every consecutive set of two words being considered a phrase. And if you're tokenizing a text into two word phrases, we call this a bigram. If you're tokenizing 
a uh, into three word phrases. We call these trigrams. And you know, more generally, you can refer to any of these uh, consecutive word phrases as n-grams, where that n refers to the number of consecutive words that you're considering in a phrase. So a bigram has an n of two, trigram has an n of three, and then you can keep going from there. So going back to when we originally tokenized the text, we're going to create a new uh, data frame called tokenized phrases. And in it, we're going to start with combined notes and then unnest the tokens into n-grams. And we'll call that column that we're going to create n-gram. We're going to break up the column text to create that column n-gram. And here we tell it which token uh, we want to use. And so we want to tokenize into n-grams. So we set token to n-grams. And we can tell it, do we want bigrams, trigrams, et cetera, by setting an n. And so we're going to set an n of 2. If you're wondering where that token argument and n argument come from, they come from the tidy text package, but they actually are passed through to the tokenizers package, which contains all the code to actually do the tokenizing. When we look at this, now we can see that instead of having the word b, cc, and difficulty as being our top you know, phrases, we've got b space cc, cc space b, b space difficulty, difficulty space width. And so these are all of our, these are all of our uh, uh, phrases that we have to work off of. Now to figure out which are the most common two word phrases, we can group by n-gram, summarize n equals n, and then uh, arrange them in descending order, and then count them. And we can see that, again, these common two word phrases like of the, the patient, in the, to the, are not really that helpful. So we've run into the same problem that common does not mean important. And so we solve this the same way that we solved uh, it before, which is that we use the TFIDF and apply it to the phrases to find which phrases are important. And we just need to decide on our unit of analysis by defining what we mean by document the same way. Do we mean, you know, if we we're going to look for two word phrases that are important for differentiating urology versus neurology notes, then we need to use that concept of urology and neurology being uh, the documents. So I, you know, again, combined the notes, we added that column for type and then applied this code. And what we can see is that if we look at words that are uh, two word phrases that are important, the ones that come up for neurology, the first one is MS space A, which probably refers to mental status alert and oriented would be the rest of that um, because it's often abbreviated as MS eight space O times three. So that's probably why MS space A is showing up. The next three have to do with kind of formatting, and I'm not really sure why the word two space two shows up. But when we look at urology notes, these tends to make more sense. Uh, the bladder, the prostate, external oblique, which refers to a muscle, uh, the penis, the urethra, uh, are you know common phrases that you'll see that are important for distinguishing notes as being urology notes as opposed to being neurology notes. So just a summary of using TFIDF. It can be used for finding important words or phrases, which comes from this area of information retrieval. And whether you're finding important words or important phrases just depends on how you tokenize. If you tokenize at the word level, your analysis will be at the word level. If you tokenize based on n-grams with you know, an n of two, then you'll be looking at the two word phrase level. Make sure to always set the document at the appropriate level of analysis. And so if you're comparing categories, um, then make sure to set the document as that category type. If you're comparing at the level of each note, uh, then just define that unique document ID for each note as your document identifier. So this is just repeating what we've already said. 
uh, if you're comparing individual notes, define the document as a single note. And if comparing categories of notes, define a document as a category of notes. And really, you're referring to the, you know, either the document ID for the individual note or the document type to point to a category uh, of notes when you do the TFIDF and when you do the grouping to count 